We started Lux about seven or eight years ago. What Lux does is translate creative intent into action. We've used backdrops on movie sets for 100 years, certainly. We kept wondering what the next development of that technology would be. We started in virtual production as a company before anybody was thinking about trying to do large-scale LED volumes. Lux Machina designs, engineers, and operates virtual production technologies and solutions for projects trying to do in-camera visual effects all over the world, whether it be individual projects or studio facilities. LED screens that are being used in unison to create environments that I can take talent and put them in front of. World creation is a whole new concept. It's the opportunity for performers and directors and teams to work within a space that exists. An immersive three-dimensional world that is as flexible as the creative on set wants it to be. I think one of our first official Lux Machina projects was Tomorrowland, which is a Disney project. Golden Globes for the last seven or eight years. Emmys a couple times. Episodic TV for shows like Titan Games. And then it sort of transitioned into more and more film work. Projects like Rogue One, Solo, A Star Wars Story, we've collectively been able to bring knowledge from those different industries. I think for us, the design is ultimately just driven by the creative. We really are in service to the greater story that's trying to be told. We do design from the beginning. I think it's worth probably stepping through, you know, how do we know what to design? How do we know what problems to solve? How do you actually get to this end result, right? Let me back up, I guess. It's much more like a traditional design process than I think everyone realizes. We try to identify what it is they're trying to achieve. We spend four to six weeks organically designing a volume. Shape, what size, what angles. But also included in that is not just the LED. We also design the camera tracking solution, the rendering solution, the infrastructure. You tweak any small thing in the volume and it has cascading effects. We developed a set of tools that allow us to prototype different shapes and sizes, give us dimensions, weights, power calculations, resolutions. We then hand it off in 3D to engineering and the engineers will break down what's required from steel, infrastructure, and rigging. When we're first starting to look at the design of a facility or a big installation, we're looking at the physical constraints of the space. How large is it? How tall are the ceilings? What's the load capacity of the ceiling? How many 400 amp circuits do we have in the building? Over the years, we've developed a number of vendor relationships, which have allowed us to stay ahead of the curve a lot of times on the technology, as well as just continue to test the hardware that's available and software as well. We are basically able to cut out this whole section of essentially R&D that you would have to do. We're sort of pulling the best from wherever we can grab it. The infrastructure that we're deploying at a stage like this scales to their needs in pre-production as well. That allows them to start seeing experiences in the LED volume as soon as possible. We've got custom previs tools that we built in Unreal that we use for our clients, giving someone at home the ability to camera block and scout. So I have been on this stage since it was empty. We started with laying out points. Then the rigging team comes in and builds a structure. A tremendous LED army comes in, lays out the edges of where that volume is gonna go, and then it builds super quickly from there. Each one of these sections is actually an LED tile. Here we're using a bunch of row LED product. You can kind of see it's all modular, so each tile sort of gets interconnected almost like a bunch of Legos. We have rendering systems, the terminal equipment, master clocks, tons of cable. We calibrate things like a lens, a camera tracking. We calibrate the color of the screens to so the rendering system. It's just a great moment to see all of the different disciplines that have worked so hard to get us to that point. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, the goal for Lux was to find a way to scale into a solution that fits the needs of clients, both big and small, and make sure that it's accessible no matter what story someone's trying to tell. Some of our clients have really small needs and some of our clients have massive, massive needs. 
the more specific idea you have of where you want to end up in terms of what you can creatively do on the day, it'll allow you to kind of narrow your focus. Not every production needs to have full-blown mocap systems. There are even circumstances where if we know well enough what the shots are going to be, we can totally design systems that don't necessarily even need camera tracking. You can get a really large image of projection for a fraction of the cost of LED. We can also do a lot of scaling of the volume itself. A set of LED tiles that are completely reconfigurable, tailoring them to the size that the production actually needs without necessarily incurring the cost of a large studio volume. The less tiles you have, the cheaper the thing's gonna be. So right now we're in the middle of an installation phase at a studio that's about 65 feet wide, 20 feet tall. The LED walls finished being built. This is a pretty good size space for pretty much any large feature production to come in here. The Lux team have been consummate in their professionalism and their commitment to this stage from the get-go to bring the latest and greatest to a brand new facility that's been designed from the ground up. We try to identify with the stakeholders what it is they're trying to achieve, who are their clients, what's the demographic of those clients, the goal being that you know people can walk in with, with as many shows as possible without having to change what's there. The systems and the technical team who has to be involved has to be at a caliber that is extremely high. Being able to see the system and understand all the different parts is as important as understanding where the buttons are. I head up Lux's physical implementation of all of this software and hardware on set. I'm there making sure that our production timelines are prepared and making sure that we've got the right team members on site. We're putting the right technology out there, the right solutions for the jobs, and following through all the way until we hand everything off to post. We understand exactly what you need from a production point of view, as opposed to a manufacturer. Tie all the products together, make sure they operate together on set. It will also help add the creative and technical knowledge that we have that those manufacturers might not have. We are well aware of what it's like to sit in the seat and pilot these systems. We're deploying best practices as well and trying to train up the facility staff there to make sure that when we hand off this facility to them, they're as self-sufficient and ready to hit the ground running as possible when those first productions show up. When we started discussing this technology with Epic, it was a natural fit for us to want to partner with them. The Unreal Engine allows us to be as flexible as we need it to be. We can create and render photoreal images reliably in real time. To be able to use the game engine for virtual production, I think that's been like the biggest improvement over the last year or two. We use Unreal and we build upon it to create a, a more holistic solution providing everything that a production might need. We're trying not to leave the engine as much as possible, not having to worry about how we get assets in or out. We're building environments inside of the engine. For example, we have the ability to move some lights in real time. This shaft of light can actually be moved around the environment while everyone is working together to see the end result in camera. We're building tool sets for controlling light cards that we can preview in real time quickly in front of clients so that they can be a part of the decision-making process as we are discovering what's gonna work for the production. How is the light actually coming from this three-dimensional world into the real world? And we can replicate what's happening on screen with an actual lighting fixture. So it kind of lays a foundation for the DP to actually start the work, and then you can fine tune from there. We can also have things like trees, getting that 3D element of the light blocking it without actually having to have something physically there. So this is the machine room, still under construction, things are getting tidied up. This machine room has about 30 tons of AC and it has about 200 amps of power. This is our version of the brain bar. This is what it looks like when they're programming. We've got technical artists in the space as well, and those are people who are gonna build out special effects, optimize the content, and really make sure that everything's running as smoothly as possible. Or even further down, you can see there's actually a camera tracking station. Camera tracking technology allows a director of photography to use these LED walls as a window into a natural world. We use OptiTrack, NCAM, and Stipe. We find that between those three things, we're able to solve most camera tracking problems. We designed something specifically for the use of this, which is, this is called the Sputnik. And we look at all of these various optical cameras all around the room. This lets us really accurately know where the camera is, what it's pointing at, how quickly it's moving. You're really locking the perspective of the audience into where you want it to be. And so that allows you a lot more opportunity to really craft an illusion. 
on the day, you're seeing more of what's going to be in the final frame than if it was just a blank canvas that would be filled in in post. That's our vision, is that this becomes de rigueur and becomes the norm of the new way of filmmaking and entertainment creation. We truly understand how to engage on a production with every single department, whether it be how do we mitigate audio sound from LED and media servers? How do we deal with camera sync in the camera department? How do we integrate lighting into real-time workflows? We've also built a bunch of proprietary color workflows and that helps us align much more closely with cinematographers and filmmakers and the way they want to work and talk about color. We designed a series of custom ladders and carts and this gives access to the steel superstructure. They can remove panels and put up additional rigging for things like stunts and additional lighting. All of these technical details that a lot of times are often a forethought are really being studied and captured here to make sure that this is the best environment possible for capturing the best quality video productions moving forward into the future. Certainly, you can get a computer and plug it into an LED wall and put pictures on a screen. That's certainly half the battle. The rest of it is making sure that you can survive the needs of production at the pace that they're going to go. We've gotten to the point that technology can make a really cool magic trick happen, which is what we're seeing today. I want to see more immersive worlds. I want to see more directors and producers have the opportunity to really see what is possible. This quite literally is the future of our industry and it's incredible to see it continuing to evolve as we kind of move forward through this. I welcome that future and I think that's something that is going to enable a lot of creativity that doesn't currently exist today. Sort of why many of us joined this industry and started to get involved in the entertainment industry is to make creative decisions and help tell stories together and to have that narrative process unfold in front of us.